Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Class from 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, October 13, 2012. Our special topic today is the K-12 Online Conference, and our special guests are the conference organizers, and I'm going to list them to, for you in a few minutes. I always like to start out the show thanking uh, Tammy Moore, who is in the chat, providing us closed captioning, as well as Lori Moffitt, who is also our backup moderator and is available today to answer and help questions uh, catch up and uh, bring them to the presenters' uh, attention during the session. I think I went through using Blackboard Collaborate a few minutes ago, but if anyone's having problems with using the interface or you can't get uh, the audio, that would be kind of fun because I'm already recording, but if you're having problems, please type it in the chat and someone in the chat who's very experienced will give you an answer as to um, what your problem might be. And the audio setup was it is usually the best thing to take a look at when we get going. So we do have a website, uh, live.classroom20.com, in which you're going to find uh, the recordings for today's session as a Blackboard Collaborate uh, recording, as an MP3 file, as an embedded audio, excuse me, video file. And the chat log goes by very quickly, and so that chat log is captured for you as well. Links to today's session, and I'm going to explain in a minute, are provided to, to you in a couple formats. And I'm looking for my line binder. And we don't have a line binder link at the moment, so I will just top off, talk off the top of my head. We have a link. It's going to be provided to you in the chat. And we're just going through to find it. And I don't see it either. So anyway, someone's going to drop the link right now. Peggy has done that. That link provides you access to today's session and the resources that are being uh, dropped in the chat or mentioned throughout the session. And uh, the second option is in that blog post in our recordings, our archives and resources section, you're also going to find a list of the links. So we're totally covered as to providing you uh, access to what's happened here today, which is really, really good because um, you might want to come back later or somebody want to recommend the uh, session to today they'll be able to participate as almost as if they were here, except they don't see quite of the activity or get to share it themselves. So let's get you all working with the world map. And if you recall the whiteboard tools on the left of the whiteboard, the second one down is your laser pointer. You need to click on it, hold it down with your mouse, and drag it into where you're located in the world. And if that doesn't work, please type in the chat where you are. Susan, I know, is in one of our presenters, is another Canadian with myself, and uh, I believe you're in Montreal. And I heard something about moving, but I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and Kim Case is in San Antonio, Texas. So I'm seeing a few. Shambles is not with us yet. I don't see him yet. Usually he's coming in from Thailand. So again, in my scroll, my chat is not scrolling, so if I miss something, it's just because I have to go back and, and check it out. So that was our world map fund. Let's go on to some poll questions. So that's the fourth icon from the right. Right now it has a little check mark, so go ahead and answer your first question. Have you ever participated in the K-12 online conference before? There, I've published the responses to, for you, so you can see that um, half the people have voted uh, have participated in the conference, and I know they're going to share their past experience and what they're looking forward to today. And move to our next poll question is, are you a conference presenter this year, or have you presented in a previous year? Take a look at our results. Not as many per percentage this year or last year, but 
uh, I know that if you have presented last year, you're going to be typing in the chat your uh, experiences as well. I just need to change the voting option, so it will take me a second to set that up. And I think that's ready to go. So our next poll question is, which conference brand are you personally most enthusiastic about? If you've had a chance to preview or if you looked at back before getting started, visioning new curriculum, kicking it up a notch, student voices. The appropriate uh, letter is there for you to choose. And I'll wait for you to make cast your vote. The kicking it up a notch seems to be the winner right now, followed by uh, visioning new curriculum. Then we go into getting started and finishing off with student voices. For what? No, I've got that. I've got that all wrong because there's an E option showing, and it's D is winning student voices, then B visioning new curriculum, A getting started, and C kicking it up a notch. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating in the poll questions. It is my time opportunity to move on now to introduce the presenters today. And we have a lot of them. And if I miss anyone, please let me know or bring it into the presentation. I know I've just mentioned to you before that uh, Peggy George and Kim Case have very been strong in uh, organizing the K-12 online conference. But we also have Susan Van Gelder with us today and Ginger Lumen, who's going to be uh, doing discussions about their particular responsibilities during the session. We do have a newbie question. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to, I believe it's Susan Van Gelder, who's going to start a presentation. What is the K-12 online conference? And from there, they're going to do a presentation. And I believe, Susan, you're going to be doing a little bit of introduction or about yourself, um, your decision. I think maybe Ginger, Peggy, and Kim may want to do a little bit of uh, intro of themselves as well. There's a couple other uh, presenters, I believe, Jose Rodriguez and Wesley Fryer, who are not with us today but their work is going to shine through as well. So I see you open the mic. Thank you very much, Susan. It's great to talk to you again today. Um, the microphone is yours. What Thank is you, Lorna. <laughs> You're welcome, Susan. Uh, before I start about the conference, maybe we should each introduce ourselves. So I'm Susan Van Gelder. I am in Montreal. And I'm an educational consultant and got involved in the conference as a uh, learner and watcher right from the beginning in 2006 and have been part of the volunteers uh, for the past, I guess it's three, four years. So Ginger, do you want to say something? Sure. Thanks for having me in. I'm Ginger Leland and I'm in Hutchinson, Kansas. Love to see that little laser pointer, bam, right smack in the middle of the U.S. Um, <laughs> nobody else around me. Anyway, um, I got involved with the uh, K-12 online conference, uh, I guess it was back in 2010, I had a student submit a session about uh, what our school was like for him. And he was the very first student voices keynoter. And then uh, last year we didn't do that. And then we have the student voices again this year. So really excited to be there, uh, be here, be with all of us. And uh, can't wait to share more and, and, and to field questions that you all may have for us. Peggy, do you want to introduce yourself, although no introduction is really needed? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Just quickly, my name is Peggy George, and I'm one of the regular co-hosts of the Classroom 2.0 live shows, and I've been involved with the K-12 online conference first as a participant back in 2006 when it first began, and then for the past few years as an organizer. So I am so excited to be able to share this with all of you today. And we have Kim here today. Yes, I'm Kim Case from San Antonio, Texas. Um, I've been involved with the K-12 online conference for a couple of years, two or three years, as just one of the organizers of the live events. And I'll be talking about that later. And I'm 
so thankful to be here and really enjoy it. So I'm going to start by giving you a bit of backstory about the conference. It's the seventh year of the K-12 online conference. It's an online virtual asynchronous conference run totally by volunteers. And while many of us think of it as a technology conference, it is first and foremost an education conference. So it begins with an opening keynote to set the stage. This session, like all others, is a recorded presentation. It is posted within a blog, and our first keynote is coming up on Monday. Uh, you'll hear more about it a bit later. And I would encourage you to watch and share your comments. Uh, it would be nice to really start a conversation around each of the sessions. Starting the following week, there will be four sessions posted each weekday in each of two weeks. Presentations are limited, uh, with the exception of keynotes, to 20 minutes. Long enough to get some great information, and short enough to fit into the life of busy teachers. The great thing is you can watch them anytime. And when I say anytime, I'm talking about in two years from now, too, or however many years, because they're all archived. And um, you can go back to uh, previous years and see presentations. Each year, we try to have presentations for everyone, from people just starting to use technology in their teaching and learning, to those who are old hands looking for new ways to teach and learn. And it's really an international conference. We have presentations from the US, Canada. I believe this year we have one from Japan, from Vietnam, um, from, uh, we've had people from uh, Australia, China. It's, it's really attracted people from all over the world. So another thing I want to emphasize is that all the presenters give their time and efforts for free. They volunteer to do this, just as all the organizers volunteer to do this. And they put in many hours, making sure their presentations are of high quality. We don't accept vendor presentations. And all presentations are licensed with a Creative Commons license, which I guess goes well with our theme this year, Learn, Share, Remix. I hope that gives you a bit of background. And uh, we can go on to the next slide. So each year we choose a theme for the conference. Uh, you can download our flyer, and we would really like to encourage you to uh, distribute it among people you know and encourage many people to join us. In the 21st century, it's important to be, well, in any century, but it's even more so now, important to be a constant learner. And we chose this theme because it embodies many of the actions we can model, both as teachers and for our students. Lifelong learning. And our digital connections afford us amazing opportunities to share what we're learning along the way. Remixing is the process of taking knowledge, using it to create in creative and innovative ways. Remixers build on the work of others. Remixing can also include transforming the ways we teach and learn. In each strand of our conference this year, presenters will explore and model ways we can learn, share, and remix our professional development. So I hope you will all be sharing uh, with your colleagues, with fellow students, with all kinds of people, and uh, share your learning with uh, the people that you work with. This is Ginger. I'm really excited to get a chance to talk about who we are as the conference organizers, the conveners. The participants are what are the people who actually put the sessions together, but the people behind the scenes who are working literally year-round to make sure that this, um, this conference, the asynchronous conference that lasts for years, uh, continues to flow nicely. Uh, is the, are the people who you see here on the screen. Uh, Susan Van Gelder uh, and Peggy George, I just have to personally say, I don't think we can do it without you two ladies. They're very organized. They keep us in, 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 in line to make sure that we are getting 
all our deadlines met, but Susan's doing double duty this year, and she's uh, the strand convener, getting things organized also, not with just all of us, but the getting started strand for people who are, are maybe new to the educational technology field. Uh, these sessions are, um, well, I guess Susan will tell us a little bit more about that in a little bit, but um, what types of sessions are in that strand. Wes Fryer is uh, unfortunately not able to be here uh, with us today. I know he was planning, but you know his life uh, comes, comes at him at about 5,000 miles an hour, too. Um, he is in charge of the Visioning New Curriculum, the strand that really pushes the envelope of what school can be or should be. Jose, Jose Rodriguez is uh, our, our man out there in California uh, who balances a family life and a school life with the K-12 online. And he's with uh, really that piece of kicking it up a notch of, of, you know, maybe we've been working with blogs and wikis for a while and with Skype, and, and now how can we really spice up uh, the work with the kids? And I, of course, am in, uh, have been the convener for the Student Voices, and that is so exciting for me. It's also terrifying for me uh, <laughs> sometimes because the kids who are coming in, I mean, they've got great mentor teachers and they're very bright kids uh, who are sharing with us the work that they've been doing, the um, thoughts they have about education. And, and I feel a little extra pressure working with them because, um, because their voices mean so much. Uh, and as educators who have our hearts open and our ears open to them, um, uh, we want to make sure that they have a good experience as presenters. And then again, thank you, George and Kim. I, I know I've been talking about organizers, but Kim has really been jumping in there and, and helping to keep us in line, too. I don't think she has as strong as a whip as Susan and Peggy have, but uh, no, she's no less important at all. But Etu is kind of behind the scenes working with uh, make, bringing you the K-12 online conference. Sometimes I'm so organized I forget that I'm next. Thanks for <laughs> See that one? Um, yes, the uh, Strand Keynoters this year, uh, we are very fortunate to have these folks come in and volunteer their time. The Keynoters are the uh, people who have created a special inspirational message that goes to um, start the, the week for their particular strand. Um, I, I, I'm so sorry, I, I'm not sure I can say a lot. And, and ladies, uh, anybody else who has uh, good information, feel free to jump in here with us. But uh, Gail Desler and Natalie Bernasconi are going to be talking with us. Um, let me grab this here. Uh, their time Digital is ID, very important topic. I'll talk a bit more about it later, Ginger. Thank you, thank you. And they're coming on first thing Monday. Uh, that's uh, October 22nd, isn't it? Let me double check that. I've got it right here. Darn it. I'm not the uh, double checking things. Um, yes, the 22nd, they're coming, digital ID. And then uh, followed that same day, Karen, and Karen, I'm so going to mispronounce your name, and I so shouldn't fast them to her. Uh, and you can tell us later. Uh, she's in the Visioning New Curriculum, and I'm going to let her talk about her keynote that comes up as well. Karen's with us today, right? I know she's going to be. And then we've got the kick, uh, Matthew Needleman has come in with us uh, for kicking it up a notch. Um, again, uh, pushing the envelope a bit. Tiana Karoka, uh, she actually works with MathTrain.tv. Very dynamic person who talks about um, her uh, video making process uh, and that, that just really helps people understand and appreciate uh, math that comes along with that. So, yeah, thank you. Our, uh, our special keynote for the entire uh, K-12 online uh, conference this year is my friend and my uh, partner, uh, Kevin Honeycutt. We actually, and when I say partner, I mean we work partner. He's he's married and so am I, still not to each other. But so he um, he and I work together uh, at ASDAC and have worked with uh, project-based learning. And so it's been uh, 
wonderful to get him involved with the K-12 online conference. Right now, I believe he may be getting on a plane coming back to us from New Zealand, but he's got his uh, keynote put together, and I got a super special sneak peek where he has visited our local Cosmosphere, uh, done some thinking about uh, space and uh, working with students and getting their imaginations fired up to do great learning. Uh, if you've ever heard Kevin speak before uh, or have ever seen him, he is certainly not a typical, even a typical keynote speaker. He'll, he'll make you laugh and cry at the same time. And I'll tell you, his YouTube video, or his, I'm sorry, his video for us, uh, for this conference, is absolutely no less dynamic than what he is in real life. So uh, he's kicked off October 15th and um, comes out in the morning. I highly uh, suggest you keep checking the K-12 online conference website, as well as the Twitter feeds, the Facebook feeds, the Plurk feeds, because this is one that is not to be missed. Extremely passionate. So, And he actually, um, I'm glad, Susan, that you mentioned a few things, because I think he does sing in this keynote as well. So, yeah. Kim, I think you were going to talk about what's the same. Yes. Each year we, um, we do some of the things that are the same um, and some of the things that are different. We try and keep things, you know, if it's working, great. And if it's uh, not working, we, uh, you know, try and fix it. And we always keep it free. We don't want to charge anything for the professional development. We try and keep it a basic format. Each weekday, two presentations will be released on uh, each weekday of the two-week conference. So that will be a total of four presentations. Two presentations for two of the strands will go live, and they'll be published on our conference blog. And we'll give you that link. It's the K12 Online Conference org, and then they're also published to the iTunes U, so that you can download them from there for free as well, and take and listen to them on your um, iPod or iPad as well. And that's really a great way to take them with you and listen to them from past and the current. Uh, online conferences. We talked about the uh, pre-conference keynote, and those are just fantastic. Um, Angel Myers and all of the great things that we've done, and those are still just um, fantastic. And we've greatly simplified the process for submitting your com your video if you are selected as a presenter. It should be very complicated, but we've greatly simplified it. So in the future, uh, please do not feel intimidated uh, to submit a proposal. If you have done so in the past, um, it might have been complicated, but don't feel so uh, intimidated for future uh, proposals because we have uh, simplified it. So I just want to uh, clarify that and encourage you to submit in the future. Some of the things that are different, we like uh, Ginger and others have mentioned, we are uh, reigniting the student voices strand this year. We feel that um, that is a really strong strand and we wanted to separate out the student voices and really uh, focus and emphasize that this year. And we're trying um, a new strand, the visioning new curriculum, uh, to see how that goes and see the different presentations and see if we want to keep that strand. We've returned the conference back to the October-November time uh, period. We uh, did try it in the November-December time thinking, well, people are going to be off to Thanksgiving, December, that might help. But um, that seems to be 
uh, conflicting with the holidays and um, that didn't seem to be uh, convenient or helpful. So we're returning it back to October. Um, so hopefully that will be able to help um, and make things easier. And we're calling more on our community to assist and involve more of the volunteers. We do have a link, I believe, in the live binder to a webinar that we have that is um, talking about ways that the volunteers can become more involved. And we're working on involving more of the volunteers and creating ways that the volunteers can become more involved so that it's not so much work on the organizers, but it's more of a community uh, conference and just instead of um, just presenters and organizers. So uh, that's one thing that we're focusing on and we're trying to uh, include more uh, of a community aspect. We had a volunteer form and um, we didn't really get to develop and organize it with as many volunteers as we would have liked, but we're working on that. So we're trying to include more of the community in the future times. And we're still taking volunteers uh, throughout the year. Um, I'm not sure about that, but we will be doing that um, again next year. So please continue to keep that in mind and watch for that for for sure for the next year. Uh, if there if I can talk a little bit about the volunteers, Kim. Uh, Sorry? If I could talk a little bit about the volunteers and, and the importance of volunteers. Uh, we have a few committees for volunteers where you can get involved. And one, you, you don't even have to be part of a committee to be involved, and that's the public relations. Uh, any tweeting that you can send out about the conference uh, on Plurk, on Facebook, to get people to know about it, to distribute flyers in your schools, write the, on the committee we have people helping to write uh, press releases, um, also, if you write blog posts about the conference, that would be great. We would really appreciate that. We have people who help design the uh, flyer for the following year. And uh, one person who's been great with that has been Naomi Harm. We also have a PD committee that's been a little bit slow to get started, but we're working on it uh, to see if we can get uh, um, a little more formal PD uh, arranged for you in terms of uh, being applicable to your workplaces. Uh, we also have a committee to help, we call them the conference preservation. Peggy has worked tirelessly with this one. She's been getting everything up to iTunes U for the current years, but we would like to get the past years there, and there's a lot of uh, nitty gritty work involved in getting some of that started. So any help we can get there is really great. I started as a volunteer. I, I'd like to tell you a little story about that. I was really fortunate. I started as a volunteer on a committee and it just so happened that two of the people on that committee were Peggy and Kim. And the chair of our committee kind of went AWOL and so he wasn't reporting back to the organizing committee. So somehow or other, Peggy and Kim and I got on the organizing committee. Uh, and that's how I got started as a volunteer and why I'm suddenly a, a strand uh, convener. But what I'd like to say, as a volunteer, it puts you in touch with amazing people. And they become part of your learning network. I would never have the contact that I have with Ginger, with Wes, with Peggy, with Kim, with Jose, if I hadn't become a volunteer. So it's really important that uh, we have new volunteers to inject new ideas and new blood, sweat, uh, no tears into this. And um, it you gain way, way more as a volunteer 
then you give. So I would really like to encourage more volunteers. Story ended. And they lived happily ever after. Thanks, Susan. I kind of forgot about that. And yes, all of the uh, presentations are released um, at 5 p.m., 5 a.m. Pacific time um, on the day of the week. And is there a press release in the live binder? I think so. Um, we can uh, also get some information to you. And there was another question, Karen, that you asked about. Um, it, it wouldn't pass, but I apologize, Karen. Um, if you type it again, I, I, I'll be able to answer it. Yes, there, um, I'm, if we go back, I'll get that for you. It's, um, I created a tiny URL for it, and it's also in the uh, live binder, I believe. But I'll I'll get that for you. Um, we've also um, had several live events, and we used to have more live events, but we found they weren't well attended. Um, you know, people lead busy lives with their teaching, their families, and so forth. And Peggy works very hard to get the uh, videos into iTunes, and she's working to get previous years conference videos into iTunes, the archives into iTunes. And some of the archives years are into iTunes. I know last year's is for sure. And she'll be talking about that later. So that's one thing um, that you could help with um, if you have time as well. And um, October 5th, there was a Twitter chat and October 13th, obviously today. You can also get involved in that same, and I, um, oops, I made a typo on that. November uh, 2nd is the same uh, connected PD Twitter um, chat, and those are the times, and that's the link to uh, that you can get involved with that Twitter chat if you'd like to discuss the the conference as well as a session with Vance Stevens. He does what, um, it's not, um, not exactly a webinar, it's more of a, a, a web chat um, online. And that's the link that you can um, find out more information at that wiki. And he does a session online about learning together. And that's gonna be November 4th. So on November 2nd and 4th, you'll have an opportunity to participate in two live events, the Twitter chat and then the other um, session that you can participate in. So we do have some synchronous and asynchronous events that you can participate in that go along with um, each conference. And we, we try and do some live and some um, some of the, the uh, live events always to support our conference to make it interactive and engaging for all of our participants that um, are able to participate. So uh, the learning together session will be similar to this one as Peggy has said. So that's going to be something to look forward to and um, you can check that out and that link will also be in the um, uh, and the storify um, you can um, those links are going to be in the live finder but you can get more information for um, posting the recording links of the events that have occurred and the live events that have occurred and will occur in the future and in the past and one thing to remember, on November 4th, the time change will have just occurred. So take that into account when you're attending the session. Um, you know, the hour 
will the fallback will have just occurred. So please uh, be aware of that when you take that into account. And I'm going to jump on here. This is Peggy George. And I want to take you on a really quick tour of the actual K-12 online site because there's lots of information there. But I want you to be able to find the most important information. So I'm going to start sharing uh, <clears throat> my browser with you. And I hope that. I won't be able to follow the chat right now, so I hope others will answer questions or let me know if there's a problem with what you're seeing here. But what I've done is I've taken us to the home page for the K-12 online conference. And it's basically a blog. So each day, as new things are added to the site, they will appear right at the top. So I'm scrolling down. I'm trying not to go too fast. But you can see what has already been posted. And new things will be coming up here every day. So if you want to just see the presentations online, you can come right to this home page. And you can go to them. But this is the real key to success in the conference. Right up here, the second icon, or the second menu item, is the 2012 schedule. That is what's on the slide that we just started this presentation with. And this is the place you want to bookmark. Because every day, as soon as those videos get uploaded, and remember, they're videos. So you don't have to log in at any certain time. Just as soon as they're uploaded, you'll be able to view them anytime from then on, both on the website and also iTunes U, which I'll say more about later. But you can see here that each presentation is listed. And they will be hyperlinked as soon as they've gone live. That's why I said bookmark this page, because then you can go right directly to the presentation that you want to see. And this just includes the, the strand that is um, being presented and also the presenters and their topic. So that's really important. The other thing about the site is all of the previous years are here. So if you're interested in going back to any of the presentations from the previous years, you can just mouse across the top here, look at each year, and select whichever it is that you would like to go to and see the presentations for that strand all the way back to 2006. And you know it's amazing. But even back in 2006, there were presentations that are still relevant today. And great examples of sharing in the classroom using various technology tools. And I go back to those links all the time. So I hope that you'll consider going back to them too. Major difference in the earlier years was the presentations were longer. Most of them were an hour long. So just in the last few years, we've gone to 20 minute presentations. And that seems to work a lot better, both for presenters and participants. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home page just to show you the next thing that I wanted to tell you about. And that is. To the right in the menu, there is a link that's all about iTunes U. And when you click on that link, it takes you to this page that tells you exactly how to subscribe. We have both a video collection and an audio collection. So you can subscribe to one or both and watch them on your mobile device. As long as you have access to the internet and iTunes U, you can access those. And uh, so in this um, blog post, if you click on the video collection link, it takes you straight to the iTunes uh, store to be able to download that. It's 
free and all of these things are free. So people have found that it's a great way to kind of listen to the presentations while you're riding that exercise bike or out walking or driving to work. Audio obviously works best when you're driving. But um, it's a great way to keep up with the, the presentations. And remember that uh, about four new presentations are uploaded every day. And every day we do it, the first thing in the morning, it's 5 a.m. Pacific time that they get uploaded. And from then on, they're there and available for you to access any time you like. So that's how you find it. Remember, click on this iTunes U link on the home page, and that will get you subscribed. So back to the schedule. That's the key page for all of you, and I want you to be sure and bookmark that. It is in our live binder today, too. And there's a slide in this slide deck as well that just reminds you about the instructions for iTunes U. And now we're ready to move on to talking about the first strand in our conference, the Getting Started strand. So take it away. OK. okay. Um, one of the things I want to emphasize about the Getting Started strand, although it is for newbies, it is also for people who've been involved for a long time. It's topics of importance to those just getting their feet wet with technology but also for those further along the continuum. For example, our keynote is about digital citizenship. Now, when I first began using computers with students, this wasn't even on the radar back in 1985. It's a topic that is important no matter where you are on the continuum. So those getting started really need to know about this. But those further along can also get a lot out of a session like this. This year, there are a number of sessions on using social media, a look at mobile learning, one on Web2 tools. But what's very gratifying is that we have both new and returning presenters. The work involved in putting a presentation together didn't scare them off a second one. In fact, what we hear from some presenters is that it was an opportunity for learning for them, whether it was the challenge of putting it together or an opportunity to clarify their ideas. So people like Valerie Burton, Rod Lussier, uh, Sherry Terrell are coming back with lots more to share with you. Really excited to hear what they have to say. If you could just advance that slide, let me see, I can probably do it. Thank you. Kicking it up a notch. I'm speaking actually on behalf of Jose Rodriguez, who is a very organized grand con uh, convener. The keynote this year is Matthew Needleman, and I have to say one of his sessions from back, I think in 2008, is one I refer to very often when I'm working with teachers. Film School for Video Podcasters, it was, a, it was masterful. So I'm really looking forward to his keynote and hearing what he has to say this year. I believe he's no longer in the classroom. He now works with teachers. But I am sure that it's going to be a, a great uh, video. And I think this is his third K-12 online presentation. So those of you who are thinking maybe of presenting next year, you can see that once is never enough for some people. Some of the topics addressed this year in this strand, remixing what teachers teaching looks like through blended learning, uh, seven Habits of Highly Effective PD Learning Experiences. I hope K-12 rates in that one. Uh, virtual Worlds, uh, iOS apps for literacy. So it really looks like something that's going to be very exciting for people who've been involved in the field for a while. And what I always say to people who think they aren't ready for some of these things, Watch it. It will plant seeds. And when you're ready, you'll remember that you heard it somewhere, and you can always go back and watch again. So that's really it for the first two strands and the first week of the conference, which starts October 22nd. The 
second week, uh, oh, did we skip a slide there? That's okay. Uh, the second week of the K-12 online conference is when we start to see the other two strands, which are the kicking it up a notch and the student voices keynote. The kicking it up a notch is, uh, actually, we'll talk about that in a second, student voices is, of course, that one we all seem to be looking for. This year it is keynoted by Tiana Kakoda, uh, and she, she has a username called, called Paul. Uh, and when you see that on there, I know sometimes people get confused, like Tiana, aka Paul. What the mathtrain.tv website is, is it's a, a place where students create math tutorials for other students. Now, there are teachers who create tutorials as well, but Tiana does such a great job of putting together really fun, interesting, and high-quality videos to help other students. She's a high schooler now, and uh, so she's coming back to talk with us a little bit about some of that process. Uh, her teacher, Eric Marcos, they've got a, we've got a picture there of him. He's a great mentor with her and for her, and, and uh, people like Eric are doing a great job with putting kids in the driver's seat of their own education. But we also have uh, Bronwyn Secchi in this strand who's going to talk to us about Quest Atlantis. Ben Rhymes talking about video story problems. We, uh, by the way, Bronwyn is not a student, but she's going to have students uh, bringing in uh, information. So she's kind of just the, again, the facilitator of that. So uh, Taylor Tracy is a student here in Kansas who is going to be talking about a uh, teacher who recently retired because, who was an amazing teacher, who felt that she no longer could help her students because she wasn't integrating technology. And so he's got a very special uh, message uh, about that situation and, and, and for all of us. Uh, Audrey McLaren McGoldrick is going to talk to us beaucoup de cool student projects. That's always fun. Uh, Wes Fryer, actually, we got uh, his son, Alex, uh, Alexander Fryer, to come talk to us about Minecraft. Uh, Brad Wilson, we're going to see a, a little teaser from him and his students here in a second about their student news team. Kyle Dunbar, talk about authentic voices. Kim Heron is a, a teacher here, uh, actually in Kansas too, uh, talking about Mars Rover and the project-based learning she does with her kids uh, uh, surrounding that. And Robert Sebelia is going to be talking about using writing uh, to work uh, in power with students uh, for a global footprint in, in learning. So if we want to go ahead, um, there's a teaser we're going to share with you here. If we go to the next slide, or, uh, that's from Brad Wilson. He's got students who have uh, a news team that they um, are going to talk with us about. They're going to share with us how they put the news together, why, and, and, and that process, and, and what that means to them more than just sitting in class and how it helps them to, to look at what's going on not only in their local world but elsewhere. So I think we're going to get ready to play that. There's a, there's a link on our K-12 online conference uh, website where you can go and you can see the teaser there. So um, I, I know that the kids are very involved in the work they're doing and I know that their actual presentation will be uh, very much with them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last um, uh, strand that we've got going. This is the one that Wes Fryer is actually the convener for called Kicking It Up a Notch. Uh, Matthew Needleman is our, oh wait, no, no, this is visioning new curriculum. I'm sorry, am I off base with this? I'll go ahead and let whoever else needs to talk. Well, I'll step in. Um, 
Uh, Karen Fassenpour, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, is our keynoter, and maybe she could take the microphone and tell us a little bit about uh, how she sees uh, this strand. Do you have a mic? Great. I've got it. Thank you. So I'm really excited about um, being about presenting on K12 Online this year. This is my first year as a presenter. And I'm particularly excited about the theme of the conference because I do a lot of work with remixing in the curriculum space. So I was, I was excited when Wes um, offered me the opportunity to do this keynote. And I really, um, I, I, when I think about new topics like this, um, I do a lot of collaboration. And I think, you know, we're all in the online space. Um, with each other, but how I approached this keynote was to get together with a lot of people um, who I think are smarter about these things than I am and brainstorm. And so that's the teaser um, for this is sort of a result of that brainstorming, um, which was great background uh, for for the for the video itself. Um, and I just really think that Common Core is a tremendous opportunity for us to think about um, curriculum in new ways. And I hope. I know there's a lot of controversy about Common Core, but I hope everybody views it as an opportunity to do some things that we all think should be done. Um, and then just lastly, I want to invite everybody to um, the Peer-to-Peer -Peer University, or P2PU, where we're going to be um, putting together a group to talk about a variety of K-12 online presentations, and we'll post them there. If you haven't been to P2PU, it's another great um, volunteer run organization, um, and the School of Ed there in particular is focused on peer-based professional learning for teachers, and it's just very um, conversation-based, um, and there are just a lot of really tremendous people there, some of, some of whom are with us here today, um, and Peggy's posted a link, so I'd love to have um, any of you join us there. Thanks, Karen. And what's nice is to see two organizations marry their different uh, goals and be able to work together this way. Really nice. Uh, so envisioning new curriculum, we're going to be looking at everything from uh, flipped classrooms uh, to, and I don't have the uh, list in front of me, of course, because I wasn't the one who was going to talk about this. I know I'm ready <laughs> now. <laughs> You're ready, teacher? Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Darn it. I think I'll just call myself colorblind. Thanks for jumping in there when I dropped that. But um, yeah, let's look at Karen's in just a second. But in the rest of the Visioning New Curriculum, uh, we've got Erica Burton talking about parents' involvement and how we provide them with what they need in early literacy. April Chamberlain, Sean Netting, and Amy Aiken are going to be talking about creating learning experiences without the textbook. Alan Hudson is talking about virtual worlds for immersive, media-rich, educational shared environments. John Bergman is talking about implementing the flipped classroom. Ian Sands has how technology helped me paint with mud. I can't wait to see that. His description looks great. Uh, Bud Hunt is coming, and he's going to talk about make, hack, and play lenses for learning. And David Simpson has digital mashups, exercise books in the 21st century. Absolutely, kids are getting active with these things. So Jane Krause, who's, uh, well, actually, there's several of my personal heroes in, these, in this conference this year, but Jane is one of my personal heroes for sure. Uh, and she's talking about making meaning with Wolfram Alpha. And Patrick Fogarty is finishing up with us on the last day of his, the week um, of uh, Friday, October 26th, with uh, going one-to-one. -one. So that's the Visioning New Curriculum strand. We'll go ahead and take a look at Karen's teaser she sent to us.
Uh, the, next, whoops, the next thing we want to go through is a little bit about how you can get professional development credit. A lot depends on your own work situation and what their expectations are. Uh, our professional development is a little bit um, self-serve. What we're asking you to do is to react to the presentations, write a blog post, create a video, respond in some way that uh, is beyond surface. And once you do that, there's a Google form that you can uh, enter your information in about uh, which presentation it's uh, responding to, your name, etc. And um, we want to have a link to share to it so that other people can see it and learn from your reflections. And then uh, you'll be able to get a certificate that you can print out yourself and present. Obviously, this all depends on what your work situation expects, but um, we uh, are doing the best we can. We're hoping at some point to get allied with a university possibly, but this isn't something that we've been able to do yet. So um, I always feel about professional development, while it's wonderful to get credit, the credit is really in terms of all the learning that goes on. But if you can get a certificate on top of that, so much the better. The rest I'm going to ask you to read yourself online. And if you're looking for the information on professional development, when you're on the K-12 online conference site, at the top right, you'll see the words professional development and just follow the link. So I think we are, how can you get involved? Uh, please share the word, and Kim, I think you have, or Peggy, more to say about that. I don't really need to add a lot, Susan, because you talked about this earlier, but the main thing is to spread the word. Let people know that the keynote is starting on Monday, and then the following two weeks, there'll be new presentations every single day. So if you watch a presentation and you love it, uh, tweet about it, post it on Facebook or Blurk, anywhere to let people know and, and get them excited about it. And um, then sign up and, and share your reflections and get a certificate as well. So we hope that you'll start thinking about really spreading the word. And we're going to skip over questions right now just to officially wrap up this session since we've got a little over time and we want to make sure you know how to get your PD certificate for today. And then we'll come back to questions if any of you would like to stay on afterwards. And we'll keep the recording going if you need to leave. The hour has come and we want to be mindful of your time. And so we're going to go ahead and wrap up, as Peggy said. We want to let you know that on October 16th, Steve Hargadon is going to have an interview session with Denise Pope. And on October 23rd, he'll be interviewing Susie Boss. And on October 25th, he will be interviewing Jamie McMillan. And uh, we want to let you know that on the 20th, we will not have a session. Um, we will be disbanding our show just for that Saturday to let everybody know um, and encourage you to attend the Discovery the Dense for All virtual conference. It's going to be from 9 to 4 um, Eastern Time. And we encourage everybody to register and sign up for that. Um, Peggy put the link in the chat. So we hope that you will take the time to attend those sessions. That's a free conference. And we encourage everybody to attend and, and explore those sessions. And we want to let you know that on the 27th, Pam Cranford will be back for a follow-up. Symbolu webinar, 
and come prepared to share your Symbaloo web mixes with, um, so that we can add them to each of our Symbaloo web pages and our home web, web mixes and um, to share your tips and examples. So if you created any web mixes, be sure to uh, let us know and bring those and your examples, your experiences, and bring those uh, with you on October 27th. So that gives you uh, some time to get yours together. And November 3rd, we're going to let you know what's coming up um, shortly thereafter. If you'd like to nominate um, a featured teacher for one of our featured teacher sessions, as soon as you exit the session today, a survey will automatically open and you can nominate a featured teacher that is working with students or colleagues in the survey. And you can also request a professional development um, certificate in that survey. It automatically opens. You don't have to do anything um, in the survey. It, it's um, completely free. Peggy sends those out. And the survey link is always in the live binder in case you forget. If you watch one of the recordings, you can also view um, and request the, uh, the, the professional development certificate by accessing the survey link and letting us know. And Lorna has just put in the Live Binder certificate, the Live Binder link, so that you can also request the professional development certificate anytime you watch one of the uh, archived sessions um, in case the survey link doesn't open automatically. But it should open automatically as soon as you exit today's session. And then you just put your name and email, and Peggy will send the certificate to you automatically. And you don't have to do anything. We want to let you know we have an iTunes U channel that um, you can subscribe to. You can sub and that link is in the Live Binders uh, um, links as well. You can subscribe to the MP3s and the MP4s, and they're all in the Live Binders link for you. And you can also subscribe via the RSS feed if you wanted the links, as well as the individual resources and um, the Live Binder links separately if you didn't want to go through iTunes U or you wanted both. Either way, if um, you can subscribe to get all of the resources shared throughout the session. And they're also on our archives and resources page if you wanted to get an individual session on our website. And that link has been put in the chat for you. We want to give a special thanks to all of the organizers of the K-12 online conference and to Steve Hargadon to Weebly for our website, to each of you who have participated in the session today, and to Blackboard for providing this, uh, this forum for us to meet each and every week. And we thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, remember, we won't meet on the 20th next Saturday, but we will be back for a fantastic session with Cam Cranford you remember the first time on Symbaloo, it was just fantastic, and everybody requested a follow-up session. Um, next, um, it's going to be fantastic again. So uh, keep your uh, web mixes ready to go. Get them ready. Set them up on Symbaloo. And if you have questions about the K-12 online conference, we um, welcome them at this time. You can type them in the chat, or you can use your microphone by clicking on the hand with the uh, arrow. And we'll be happy to give you the mic, and you can ask one of the organizers directly. Either way is fine. Um, I didn't see too many throughout the chat, although I was kind of 
um, paying attention to things. Lori, did you see any questions that weren't answered um, throughout the session that we might have missed? Okay, great. I didn't see any either. But if you have any, uh, that's what I thought that you were answered as we went along. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, if you have any that come up, uh, be sure to let one of us know, or you can always go to the k12onlineconference.org website, and most of the ans most of the questions that you might have, all of um, the answers should be there somewhere in the blog post. Um, there are several teasers that we weren't able to show you today. We ran out of time that you can view um, in, to get ready for the conference, to get excited about the presentations that are coming, uh, to see some of, all of the teasers are in the live binder. Uh, you can see some of the past conference presentations and keynotes um, on that website as well as well as in iTunes view. But um, there are some great things ahead coming. And be sure to uh, share the conference with your colleagues. Let them know what's coming up. Let them know that it is free. They can view it anytime. They don't have to just view at um, 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. It will be released at that time. But they can view any time that day, that week, that month, that you know, throughout the year. Uh, you can get together at a faculty meeting, at a conference period, um, show parts of it. You can show small clips um, and share pieces uh, to discuss. However, you show um, what we call LAN parties, small groups, um, to view the 20-minute uh, presentation. And that's kind of why we kept them down to 20 minutes, so that you can, um, you know, it, the, each presentation is short enough, but long enough for the content to be shared. And please leave comments on the videos. If yeah, um, you can also leave questions, and the uh, presenters can get to those as well. And yeah, the popcorn and chat idea is great. Um, so we uh, welcome your feedback. We welcome uh, your comments as well. And we thank everybody for joining us today. Have a great weekend and week. And be sure to start working on your Symbolu. In addition to all viewing all of the K-12 uh, uh, videos that will be released starting on the 22nd. But most of all, remember on the 15th, the keynote with Kevin Honeycutt is going to be released. And that one is going to be one that you would definitely want to share with everybody. And um, don't forget that starting on November 2nd, it's going to be a live event and some of the events in there. And the scribed, uh, let me get that scribed link again. Kim, the scribe link is in the live binder. So okay. let's go ahead and stop the recording so we can get it processed Great. and everyone will be able to access it from there. Great. Thank you so much. You said you had to be a paying member. It should